Step 6, Initial Advancement. Set your finger stoppers 1 cm from the skin if delta is more than 15 mm. Use 2 thirds of delta if it is less than 15 mm. Be accurate on setting the 1 cm mark. Less is better than more. Use the two hands technique and stay in the sagittal plane. No medial or lateral angulation. Watch the resulting trajectory while you are walking off TP. You should be almost perpendicular to the skin. Continuing on, feel for engagement with the SCTL and the possible feel of the ligament pop on its penetration. Stop advancing the needle when your finger stoppers flush with the skin. Do not push in too much. Walk off TP and advance the needle until your fingers touch with the skin. The needle tip will be one centimeter deeper than the depth of the TP. Technique of advancing the needle below TP depends on the depth of TP. If TP is not very deep, one can walk off TP millimeter by millimeter and advance the needle below it until your finger stoppers flush with the skin. If TP is deep, you cannot use this technique. When you land on a transverse process, there are two options to proceed. If the patient is relatively small, you can walk off down and then advance. However, if the patient is larger, you cannot do this technique without bending the needle. Therefore, you need to pull back, angulate your needle a little bit, and advance in this way. To avoid an unfavorable trajectory, try to shift the soft tissue down and pry under the TP to slide the needle under without increasing the angle. It may be wise to consider a new more caudad entry point. Here is what it looks like to pry the needle under the TP after you realize the trajectory was suboptimal. Here is an inside look of what it looks like to pry the needle under the TP after you realize the trajectory was suboptimal. Step 7. Check for a loss of resistance. If loss of resistance is positive, skip step 8. Take the stylet out and check for badness at the needle hub. Connect the loss of resistance syringe to check for resistance to inject. Be sure to check the depth of the needle at the skin and one more time note the angulation. If there is resistance to inject, we continue with secondary advancement. Step 8. Secondary advancement if loss of resistance is negative. After noticing the depth of the needle at the skin, we start secondary advancement for 5 more millimeters or loss of resistance, whatever comes first. We split secondary advancement into three increments, two, two, and one millimeter, while checking for a loss of resistance after each increment. This is an inside view of secondary advancement. Secondary advancement is more common at the lower levels or when the angle of the needle to the skin is more than minimal. If there is no loss of resistance after secondary advancement for 5 mm, it is wise to start from scratch and strive for a better trajectory. This should be almost perpendicular to the skin. The alternative is to use an ultrasound to verify the needle tip position. Step 9. Ultrasound confirmation during normal saline test dose injection. Position the ultrasound probe medially about one centimeter away from the needle with a lateral tilt with the TPVS of interest in the middle. Inject about two to four milliliters of normal saline while focused on the TPVS of interest. If there is no resistance to inject and the pleura is being displaced, we reach the endpoint and it is okay to proceed with catheter placement. It is normal if a patient experiences some discomfort during injection of a larger volume with higher pressure. If one injects air into the TPVS, we will see a whiteout to contrast the SCTL. Here is an ultrasound verification during injection of normal saline. 
as you can see, hydrolocation is in play here. Preferably use a soft tip catheter. Advance the catheter 5 cm past the needle tip. For a 9 cm needle, this will mean 17 to 18 cm at the thread assist device, and then remove the needle. Note the catheter depth at the skin.